guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thanks for joining me on episode 16. Um, there have been a lot of new subscribers to the channel, and I want to say a huge thank you for that. You guys are awesome. And for all of you who um, made comments or left comments on the videos, thank you so much. Those made my day. I really, really appreciate it. You guys are really awesome. Um, there is a Ravelry group for the podcast. Go look for uh, Fairly Fiber Fun on the Ravelry groups. And... There is a Patreon page for the podcast, and that is for anyone who wishes to financially sponsor the shows, um, you get cool swag in exchange as a thank you. Um, that is Fairly Fiber Fun, Fairly Fiber Fun on Patreon, and my store is Fairly Fiber Fun Shop at Etsy.com. Dot Etsy.com. I can't talk today. Um, I don't have any show notes, but I have a lot of things to show, to share. <laughs> Please bear with me today. This is crazy. Um, I have a few FOs, a knit in progress, a few spins, and a whole bunch of fun news. So let's get started, shall we? If you are a returning viewer, thank you for continuing to watch my shows. And if you are a new viewer, welcome. I really appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with me today. I actually filmed this episode a few weeks ago and I edited it and I just wasn't happy because I wasn't feeling well and I didn't smile and I thought you guys deserve some smiles so okay um so let's get started shall we this what I'm wearing is the flex light by tin can knits um and because I don't have show notes I don't remember what needles I used and all that so I will stick that in the show notes I didn't change anything with the pattern except the length of the body. I made it really, really long. It's almost tunic length because I really hate it when I bend over and my shirt rides up and my pants ride down and, you know, there's a strip of skin that shows and I don't like that. So I made it extra long and it's, oh, it's tunic length. <laughs> Completely covers my bum. Super wash Targi fiber that my kids helped me dye. They picked the colors. My boys did. And I did a combo spin out of the four different color ways that we we got. And two different kids picked the colors, and it ended up really, really pretty. I love it. I kept the more purples up at the top because um, I don't look good in yellows. So, but it's so pretty. And, of course, I love it forever because my boys helped me make it. So, yeah, that makes it extra special. <laughs> So that's my big FO. I started this back in May and I finally got it done. It sat and languished waiting for the second sleeve to get done. I had second sleeve syndrome. So um, other knits that I finished are a couple of hats. Um, these are from Arctic Knitting Podcast. I'm drawing a blank on her name. Emilia Bjorno from Norway. These, this hat is Norwegian hat. And it's not written for fingering weight yarn. And these are both hand spun yarns. One's a little thicker than the other, but it worked out okay. So this is number one. And I think I did the tensioning fairly well. I'm pretty new to color work, so um, yeah. I'm happy with how this turned out, though. I've been watching a few podcasts where there's a lot of stranded color work going on, um, Skin Deer Knits and Arctic Knitting Podcast. I haven't started um, Nordic Stitches yet. Um, planning on watching those too. <laughs> so here's, uh, here's the reverse of the colors and there's the second hat. And I like this one better. I think I did a Two things. One is I did a better job with the tension, and the other is the fatter yarn seems to pop in the pattern a little bit more. So, and I did both of these hats with both strands over my left finger. I am a continental knitter, and um, ooh, I need to bring something in here. Anyway, um, so I dealt with the yarns constantly tangling up. And it made such a huge difference. Usually I 
knit continental with one strand and I throw English style with the other hand and my tension's all weird. I have a really hard time controlling it. So this time I um, I did only one handed and it worked really, really, really well. So um, I ordered a um, knitting ring. Okay, so after I finished the first hat, I wanted a knitting ring. So I made one out of jewelry wire and it worked so well that I decided to order some. And I ordered two, but I've only used one. So this is what they look like. And I haven't made up my mind how I feel about these yarn tension thimbles, whatever you want to call them. But they make stranding so much easier. Yeah, the yarns like to tangle on the back of the finger a little bit. You have to keep separating them, but um, it works pretty well. So using this new ring, well, using, using the one I made, I knit hat number two. Using the ring that came in the mail, I knit my own design. These are Harry Potter socks. And I did these on DPNs, which is not all that recommended. Um, the first pair of socks, they fit me really well. They um, knit them on 1. US 1.5, which is 2.5 millimeter needles. Um, for the color work, and I use US 1, or was it 2.25 millimeter, for the cuff and heel and toe. So all the non-stranded, I used a smaller size. Because I like my socks really, really, really tight. So I uh, went up half a size for the, the stranded part. So this is the pattern I designed. It's the Harry Potter Hogwarts House Hufflepuff socks. Um... And that's a mouthful. I really need to shorten that. Just Hufflepuff. <laughs> but they were so much fun to make. And there's the shield on the back with the badger. And one on the front. So, um, first sock. And I decided I wanted to try something different. So, second sock's a little bit different on the sides. And I made a few changes to the where the chart repeats. And because here I have all this stuff right here that I don't have on the second sock. I'll show you this side. So, um, and I carried the stripe, the decrease stripe from the gusset all the way down, which I really liked. But I don't like the stripes that I put in here. I tried striping and I, it's just not my thing. So, these are completely finished. I've woven in the tails and everything. I made them in nine days, September 1st through September 9th, and they're completely done. They fit perfect. They're beautiful. They're awesome. I'm really happy with this pattern. Um, I had to make a bunch of edits and, and change it up, and then I decided to make the smallest size because I have it written in, I think, five sizes right now, and this is really too small for my eight-year-old, so I might remove this from the pattern. But this is for a seven inch long foot that is six inches around and right now I have no idea what that is in centimeters. I apologize. Um, I did the new changes to the pattern repeats, um, the gusset decreases carrying the little stripe all the way down. Um, so this is the official what the pattern is going to look like. Um, but I didn't knit the heel flap quite long enough and he has a really hard time getting these on his feet. His feet are growing. So, here's the beautiful flutes. I'm doing these on Magic Loop um, instead of DPNs. Same needle sizes as the other ones, but Magic Loop instead. And I'm getting really nice floats. So I'm having a lot of fun with these. and. And those little bitty ones are going really, really fast. Um, I cast these on as soon as I found off these, so September 9th. And I am almost done with the leg. 
of the second sock. And when I'm knitting, let's try to show you right quick, I keep the contrast color underneath the main color. And for these, yellow is the main color. So, oops. I thread the black through the part of the ring that's over that's closer to my hand and then I thread the yellow through the one closer to the tip of my finger and when I go to make a stitch I pull all I pull the wire through I keep it wrong side out and I pull the wire around so that all these stitches are spread out before I make my very first stitch and I hold it that way so this is how I do it And it's really pretty quick. Um, a lot slower than the way I usually knit, but it's still really fast compared to without the ring. So I don't have my chart in front of me, so I can't do any more than that, but you get the idea. My problem with this ring is that the yarn gets tangled up every time I move my hand, every time I set the knitting down. Sometimes it's easier just to throw the yarn over my finger and knit even though I have to constantly change them and move them around and um, it slows me down a lot. But So there's pros and cons to using these little knitting rings but or yarn tension rings, yarn guides, whatever you want to call them. but they do speed up your knitting considerably if you're a continental knitter and you have trouble holding the two strands over one finger without the yarn guide. Um, I've also seen where a like a diamond ring or something that stands up um, on the finger and putting one strand on one side of the ring and the other strand on the other side of the ring can also help. So you never know. But anyway, that's how I do stranded color work on socks. With Magic Loop, I always knit wrong side out, so instead of knitting across the front of the work, I knit across the back of the work. So I'm working on the same, I'm knitting, I'm not purling, and I'm working on the same side as I would, it's just that it's on the back needle. So and I hope that makes sense. Anyway, that is all the knitting I have to share with you guys right now. I think I have, I think that's all I've worked on. I've been working like crazy to get this pattern released um, to testers. Right now I am tech editing it because I have this nasty habit of doing spelling out the word knit half the time and the other half the time just use a K. Yeah, I need to be consistent. So that's what I'm working on right now. And I have another test going on that requires a whole lot of editing on the document or the pattern. So, um, yeah. I don't remember if I shared with you this skein of yarn yet. I don't even know if I've set the twist. I don't think I have. Hmm. I need to write notes. Seriously. It doesn't feel like I washed it. This is Romney, my midnight colorway on Romney top that I spun up into beautiful, beautiful yarn. And I would get out the uh, roving, but I mean the top it's not roving when it's combed top. Anyway, I would get it out, but it's in this box underneath my yarn box, which is new. And this is the leftovers. I, I spun this to two different bobbins, and when I applied it back, I had this much left over, so I made a plying bracelet and applied it on itself. And before washing, it's a lace weight. So once I wash it, hopefully it'll poof a bit. So that's an older spin that I had finished several weeks ago um, and yeah I love spinning it it's really pretty it doesn't have enough of the lighter section so I think I'll back off a bit on the heavy-handed dyeing because I really prefer a little bit more pops of light color um, okay news um, I'm not done showing you all my spins but I want to talk about something first uh, I have joined the 
DM Fibers Spinzilla team. And I got some acquisitions, which I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I will put a picture in here though. There were some lovely bats um, that I got from a D stash. This was Deep Storage D stash. They had been in storage forever. They had been stored with mothballs and they stunk because, you know, mothballs stink. But the fibers were surprisingly well preserved. There was some matting, a little bit of felting, but very spinnable still. Um, didn't feel all that pleasant. Um, it's not soft. It had lots of uh, sparkles and silk and uh, just all sorts of different fibers, different fleeces. It was mostly mohair, which I have mohair right here. Um, this is natural undyed mohair. And this is how I knew that most of that fiber was mohair. Even though I had been told there was a lot of mohair, it just didn't register when I looked at the pretty sparkly, brightly colored bats. It was every single color in those. Um, so I spun, I think, two of the bats onto one bobbin on my Bay Pinky. And look at this. I have washed this with mane and tail shampoo and conditioner. And I had to use a good bit of vinegar to get the um, mothball smell out because it was pretty strong. But the vinegar stopped the bleeding because this was bleeding color like crazy. Um, and I was going to soak out the excess dye, but I couldn't stand the smell. So I put vinegar in it and that stopped the bleeding. So there are little bits of orange and blue and green and it's every single color but from a distance it looks like mud so there are pros and cons to having all the colors together um i have no idea what i'm going to do with this i really don't um i spun it however the heck it wanted to be spun i let the fibers determine the whole way through and i had so much fun it's the first time i have intentionally done that it was so much fun i've never spun an art bat and um, it's really neat. It softened up a lot with washing. And it's still really, really sparkly. And um, I just, I really had fun. So yesterday I had been invited to go to the Sheep and Wool Festival. That's an hour and a half away from me. It's actually at the fair. Um, and it was pouring down rain. I took my babe pinky PVC spinning wheel because it's the least likely to get damaged in the rain and I took a whole bunch more of this fiber and I spun an entire bobbin and plied it while we were there. I had two of my boys with me and they played and had fun and made noise while I was spinning. Lots and lots of people stopped. The 10 year old took pictures and we did spend some time walking around the fair and looking at everything and we made a few friends and we had lots of people stop and talk to us and um, a little a little toddler played with my wheel and um, it was a lot of fun it was it was just a great day and I I love to demonstrate spin it's just an amazing thing to talk to people while I'm doing it and to show them and just you know, even those who were interested in touching the fiber, just here, take a piece of fiber with you. It was just, it was amazing. So, this game has not been washed, but this is the one I spun at the fair, where I wasn't paying any attention to what I was doing at all. It is so pretty. There's so much color in these. I just, oh. So... I am going to see if vinegar and peroxide, white vinegar and hydrogen peroxide in the bath will eliminate the smell. That works in the washer for clothes, so we'll see um, if that will work with this. But I had so much fun and it was great to um, just kind of have a mindless spin and when I was, I had an extra bobbin with me for the wheel, but I wanted to wind a center pole plying ball, and so I tried with an Andean bracelet, and I would wind a bit, and then push it up my arm, and then wind on my hand, and then push it up my arm. And my kids, I'm in the middle of that, and my boy's like, Mama, 
I need to use the restroom. And I'm going, I can't leave my wheel. I didn't even think about the fact that I could take the bobbin off and carry it with me. It just didn't occur to me. But anyway, by the time I was done, I had an arm full of yarn. So I'm walking around the fair with my arm completely covered in yarn. Um, like a sleeve of yarn. It was so funny. I'll show a picture of that here. Um, it was great. We had fun. We, I think I've said that a million times. <laughs> There, we were in the same room as the uh, model train, and that was so fun. They had, I think, five or six different trains going, and they had a little bitty one, and they had, there was um, a little miniature farm, and they had people swimming in a lake, and um, the lake was like this big, really, really tiny, and the people were, were this big, just, they were so cute. Maybe a centimeter tall. Um, it was just the the whole setup was incredibly detailed, and that was the best part of the fair. We got some ball peanuts and some ice cream, and no rides because I was working. We weren't there to play; we were there to work. Um, but we looked around at everything, and we enjoyed chatting with the other vendors and seeing what other people were doing. Um, it wasn't as busy as it would have been if it had not been raining because the hurricane has been causing lots and lots of rain in our area. N not bad winds or anything, just tons of rain. And people, some people don't mind and other people just stay away from, you know, they don't, they don't want to get wet. So we got pretty soaked, but it was a great day. Um, I spent, I think, about four hours there, and I managed to spend all of this in the four hours. Let's see how many yards I've got. I haven't counted it. 94 yards. So, and I don't remember how many yards I got on the other one, but I think it was about 86. So about the same. Pretty close. Yeah. I'm very happy with that experience. Experience. Somebody tried to buy some of the. Asked me. Somebody asked me if I was selling my hand spun yarn, and I was like, um, actually, no. That is for display only. <laughs> and they weren't. They weren't very happy with me. But you know, they like the yarns. But who's going to spend a minimum of fifty bucks on a small skein of hand spun yarn that looks commercially spun? I mean, it's really even yarn. So I could see them spending that much on this this yarn that's like artsy and yeah I don't know anyway great day loads of fun uh, today I am supposed to dye another set of yarn I have four dye pots so I can do four colors at once and um, I can do eight skeins at once because I do two skeins per dye pot they're pretty small and but they're all that'll fit on my stove any bigger and I can't get that many on my stove. So it's the, the problem with living in a little bitty apartment. <laughs> but I have so much yarn dyed up now that I had to get a separate box for it because my fiber box, I was putting my yarn in with the fiber and I couldn't get the lid on it and there was a mountain of yarn on top of this box and I decided today that I was gonna get a box for the yarn. So I did and I've got all my yarn in here. I mean, oh my gosh, all this yarn. There's room for more. There's lots of room for more. All the Harry Potter yarns that are in my shop, I have them set up in sets um, where you can purchase the main color or the contrast color or both. Um, they're not the pattern kits yet. And I have some self striping yarn in there, and I've got some new colorways to show you. I dyed up some yarn for the Fat Fiber box for September's Fat Fiber theme, which is Falling Into Spaces, something like that. Um, so I wanted something with fall colors, and what came out looked like a bonfire, so I have named it Bonfire. This is what it looks like in skein form, and this is what it looks like reskeined. So you can see there's a good bit of difference. The color is no longer in clumps. 
Um, but I'm not rescanning all of them. I just did this one for for me to see it better. Um, so this is what they look like. And it's really pretty. These are not in my shop yet. But this is to go along with the Fat Fiber theme for September. And I do need to get this in the shop. I think I have five skeins of this because three of them were turned into samples. For the Fat Fiber contributors thing. And I don't like making that many mini skeins. I really don't. I need better tools. Anyway, I'm not very good at turning them into... I just lied. I'm not very good at doing, <laughs> doing this. <laughs> so, I need better tools to make this easier and quicker, but it works. It works pretty well. And then I have this one that is blues, greens, blues, greens, and browns. I cannot talk. And I'm thinking of what it looks like when you lay on a forest floor and you look up through a little gap in the trees and you see the sky. That's what this made me think of, but I do not yet know how to put that into a short, sweet name. So this is a really pretty colorway. I had so much fun dyeing this. And it was so simple. Sometimes the more simple dye jobs are the most beautiful. Sometimes, not always. So I'm really, really loving this. And I have four skeins of this one. I might just call it forest. Forest Sky? I don't know. What do you think this should be called? I don't know. I don't know what, should, what I should do with it. And then I've dyed up some. I'm, I am in the process of dyeing solid yarns, except that I don't do solids. I do tonal solids, which means that there's a light dark variation. Although I only use one color, um, it is a light dark variation. And my Harry Potter yarns are all that way, except for the one self-striping, which is a Slytherin self-striping that I don't really care for all that much because there's some white bits, but it is a self-striping. So, but I have, and I should have gotten these out, because now I'm just digging through this box, and you're having to endure me standing up and talking to you. I have another one. I did four. Of course, they're on the bottom. Okay. I wasn't planning on showing you guys this. I was going to do it separately. Oh well. So I have sky blue. Turned out pretty. What happened with this game is I put the dye in the dye pot and I went to put the yarn in and the dye looked like it had disappeared. So I put the yarn in and I went, well, there's not enough color. So I mixed up a bit more and I poured it in and stirred and it struck really, really fast. So I have light sections and dark sections and I love it. That's definitely my thing. And then I have cotton candy pink. And because the dye had not dissolved in the dye stock container, there's little flecks of bright pink in there, which I think is awesome. And then I have mint. For some reason, these were really easy to name. My daughter took one look at this. She says, Mama, that looks like mint, and it is my favorite color of green. So, immediately, this is named mint. And this is light brown. Isn't that creative? Light brown. I had to mix several different colors together to get this color. I wrote down what I did. I hope I can. <laughs> I hope I can recreate it accurately. So I wrote down what I did. Um, all of these should be repeatable. All of these are on two skeins, not just one. I'm just showing you one. So those are all my light colors that I dyed up this weekend, and I still have to do a set of dark colors. Um, again, I can only do four at a time because I only have four dye pots and usually one dye session is all that gets done in a single day 
And I try not to dye every day because nothing else happens. I just do dyeing all day. Um, like today I was supposed to dye up the dark colors and I was in the mood to bake everything. So I made bread and I might make cookies later. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, I have bread cooling on the counter right now. Two loaves of yummy, yummy, yummalicious whole wheat bread. Made from scratch, by hand, no machine, because that's the way I roll. So, there's that. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel really scatterbrained. Like, I'm normally... I normally have show notes. I am... Still on a kind of high from yesterday. It was exhausting. I, um, the fair, I picked up a nail and my tire did. And I had to go straight to the gas station and put air in my tire. It was down to 18 pounds of pressure per whatever. I don't know what the, what it is. It's supposed to be between 32 and 34. And it was 18. So that was really bad. So I filled it up. And I started driving home. It was an hour and a half drive. And I made it about an hour. And I stopped for gas. And I put air in the tire again. And it was down to 20. So um, I put it up to about 35, I think. And I drove home. And it was 8 o'clock at night. I was exhausted. It was raining. It was getting dark. And I, I told my boyfriend, I'll just, we'll, we'll figure it out in the morning. I'm too exhausted to deal with it now. And it's Sunday and nobody's open and we'll just deal with it tomorrow. So I got the kids in bed and I went to bed and I couldn't sleep because I was so excited. And um, I had I was so stressed out on the way home thinking that my tire was going to blow or something. And it didn't. It was fine. Um, so I took it to the shop today and I got this morning. I was able to drive it to the shop. Uh, it was at about 23 pounds of pressure, which is... Considering it sat in the driveway all night, that's not bad. Um, so they plugged the hole, and where the nail was, it may or may not hold. Probably will, but there's a possibility it won't. Um, but I need tires anyway, so I'll be getting new tires soon. And if, if the plug doesn't hold, I'll get them sooner. No big deal. So um, I still have some tread, but it's getting to where I'm afraid of hydroplaning whenever it rains, so, um, yeah, I, I know I need to get new tires soon, as in within the next six months. <laughs> I might have one tire rotation left, I might not, we'll see. Um, but I don't want to push my tires too far, I mean, I, I, with kids in the car, I just, I'd rather have good tires, I'd rather spend money on tires a little bit before they give out completely, then risk having a tire blow on me when I'm two hours away from home or something. So, um, yeah. I think I forgot to mention that I went to Spin Guild in August. It was the fourth Saturday, I think. And it was my first time of being with a huge group of other hand spinners. I had been to a smaller spinning guild in Athens. This one was the Peachtree City Hand Spinners Guild in Duluth. Yeah, Duluth, I think. Down um, near Atlanta, somewhere in that, towards Atlanta. It's a hour and 40 minute drive, I think, to get to where it was. it's at. Um, where the meetings are. It's really nice, pretty church that they meet at. Big fellowship hall. I was allowed to be a vendor even though I wasn't a member of the guild. And I had my fibers with me. I was not prepared to vend. I didn't have a way to take credit cards or anything. But I still sold a couple of things and that was cool. So I made a little bit of money and made my day. Everybody was talking about how beautiful my dye work is kept telling me, do more of this color, more of that color. I really like what you're doing. Your colors are gorgeous. And that made my day. I There are so many big indie dyers out there. And I feel so insignificant compared to these well-known dyers that everybody loves. You know? And 
why would somebody want to choose my fibers when they can get something just as beautiful from someone else? But from what I was hearing, my fibers are gorgeous and people love them. So I'll keep dyeing fiber. Right now I'm on a yarn dyeing spree, so there won't be fiber updates for a while. I do have more fiber just when I have a new, a new base, Cheviot, 100% um, Cheviot top. I did that because I like to make socks out of Cheviot yarn. I'm crazy. Um, I'm all into socks. <laughs> uh, you can do all kinds of things with Cheviot, but it's more of a rustic style wool versus the Merino or the Blue Face Lester or Targi or the really, really soft downy wools. So um, yeah, I'm thinking more along the lines of color work stuff with those. Um, but we'll see because there's just a million projects going right now. I have like eight spins in progress. Hi most of them just sitting hibernating because I don't know, there's new exciting stuff coming in all the time. So <laughs> I have all of my fibers ready for Spinzilla and I have two or three spins just that I haven't been working on. One of them I haven't been working on for almost a year. I really need to do it because it's supposed to turn into a sweater. Yeah. We'll see if that ever happens. Because I'm not interested in spinning gray wool, indefinitely. <laughs> anyway, I'm spinning merino to make leggings. Spinning it a specific way, processing the fleece a specific way so I can knit a pair of leggings that look like blue jeans. And I have a half, I'm halfway done. And I need to spin three more, three more skeins of yarn. Um, I have several Jacob fleeces that I need to scour and spin because it's much more pleasant to spin them when they're clean. I can spin them dirty, but it's just easier when they're clean. So um, I don't get as much dirt and grease all over my clothes, and it's just more pleasant. Um, so there's that project, but I've been waiting for cooler weather because I have to boil water in order to get it hot enough to scour the wool, and that heats up my house so much the air conditioner doesn't want to do its job. So my air conditioner is too small for the space that it's cooling. So if I turn on the oven or heat up the house by boiling water on the stove. My air conditioner cannot keep up. So I'm waiting for cooler weather and I will dry the fleece indoors. I have a spin dryer. I can throw it in the spin dryer and lay it out on the drying racks in my daughter's bedroom. The poor girl has to put up with wet fleece in there all the time and yarn. <laughs> but um, it's the only space for it because, you know, little tiny house and lots of hobbies here. Um, but she does have a keyboard in her room so I can't really complain because she's the only one that plays on the keyboard and if it was out in the living room where it should be, everybody would play on it. Anyway, um, yeah, I was, I got distracted. I was talking about Spin Guild and I completely forgot to tell you about my stash enhancement. And I'm going to show you a picture of um, all three of these wheels outside because this stash enhancement, tool enhancement, it's a spinning wheel. It's a great wheel. And I want to show you all of my wheels together so you can see how they look kind of nestled together. Because I have the, the great wheels vintage. And my flax wheel is antique. It was built in, well, the date on it um, is sitting right next to me. The date on it is 1814. So it was made in the 1800s. And beautiful, beautiful wheel. And then my very modern Bay Pinky, which was made, I think, two years ago. <laughs> I ordered it. I received it in May, the beginning of May. Um, 2016 so I've had it ever since then um, and I don't know if it was made way ahead of time or if they're made to order I have no idea so it was made about two years ago and it's so tiny compared to the humongous great wheel but I've been trying to learn to spin on this quill two things the first is I hold my fiber in the right hand no matter how I spin the fiber is always in my right hand I never hold it any other way. So when I am spinning, 
my left hand is in the front and my right hand is in the back and I'm either drafting forward with the left hand or I'm drafting backwards with the right hand and I do long draw like this. I do supported long draw most of the time or something between true long draw and supported long draw and my right hand is very good at controlling the fiber. On a great wheel it's set up where you have to use your left hand. You turn the wheel with your right and you pull the fibers back with your left. And there's no supported to it, it's just long draw. So I'm having a really hard time learning to control the fiber with my left hand. That's the first thing. And the second thing is I have no idea how much twist to use. You would think I've been spinning for three years. I have two different wheels that I use regularly. You'd think I'd know how to spin by now and the drop spindles and everything, but a quill wheel doesn't have take up, it doesn't have tension. You create that tension and you wind the yarn on when you're ready to. There's no take up, there's no bobbin, there's no, it's so different. I don't have any idea how much twist to put in or how quickly to get the twist into it, how slowly or how fast to draft. And so my yarn keeps breaking. Well, when I got the antique wheel, I had the same issue. First three or four yarns fell apart constantly while I was trying to ply. And I had to keep tying knots in it. So for me, I think that's a normal get to know the wheel stage. But it's really aggravating because I want to spin and I want to spin really fast and I want to spin now. And I want to be comfortable with it now not later. <laughs> so I just have to remember to slow down and take my time and learn the wheel and learn how to use the left hand to control the fiber because that is very uncomfortable. Very, very new. So I made a video of me spinning on the great wheel that I'm going to link to. You can um, go watch it. Um, I have had about three weeks with this wheel and I've been spinning on it quite a bit. So what you are seeing is my second yarn. I did not ply the first one. I'm not plying on the great wheel right now. I am only only spinning the singles. I will ply on the bay pinky. Um, so and I have spun half of the fiber that I have of this color, um, the blue color. So. I have the other half to do, but right now the kids have been attempting to learn to spin on it, and so there's sample fiber on there. This, you know, I just separated out some braids and really, really thin strips and let the kids spin the strips without any drafting at all. And they had so much fun with that. So I have this really thick, thick yarn, like huge thick yarn on there in yellow and purple. It's kind of funny, but they had fun with it, and they think it's pretty. And uh, they kept throwing the, uh, the drag band off of it because the, the great wheel shifts angle. And if it shifts angle too far, the drag band just slides off. So it's, the wheel has a lot of character, but it's beautiful. And my boyfriend said, and you know, I'm, I'm borrowing it. My boyfriend said to pay for it, so just buy it. I like it. I don't want it to go away. I want it to stay in the house, so buy it. He's a great man. This is my birthday present. This month is my birthday on the 21st, so next weekend, no, this weekend, oh my gosh. So um, there is a, there's been a lot going on, like the yarn was an early birthday gift, undyed yarn. My boyfriend gave me like $300 to spend on yarn. So I did, and that was awesome. And then I treated myself to a few other things and said that the kids bought them for me. Is that an okay thing to do? Oh, kids, by the way, you bought your mama some stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, I had originally told the kids they could spend like 10, 15 bucks a piece on me for my birthday. And then I told them one day, I said, like, well, I ordered so much stuff that um, it's from you guys. <laughs> Happy birthday to mom. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, a little bit crazy, um, but, and then of course there was Spinzilla, so I had to buy some fiber. 
everything that I do this month, I am blaming it on the fact that it's my birthday. Not blaming it. That is my excuse. I might need fiber. My excuse is, it's my birthday. Spenzilla's coming up. I need fiber to spin, right? I don't have my own fibers that I've dyed, so I have to go buy more. Anyway, I have rambled on long enough, and I'm sure you guys would like to go do other things besides sit here and listen to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm starting to get a horse, so I do need to go. And um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. It's a little bit, not a little, a whole lot different. And weird and relax. Just trying something new. I want to go just fling myself into it. No preparation. Just see what happens. And we'll see. So yeah, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you would like to test knit any of my patterns, go join the Ravelry group. And if you would be interested in receiving some of my hand dyed fiber or yarn, go join the Patreon Hey, Patreon, Patreon nudge. <laughs> Go check me out on Patreon. <laughs> I do have a new patron and I wanted to say thank you so much for your financial support. You should have already received your quarterly package for September. I did mail it out last week and it, it was supposed to arrive today. So I hope you received it and all of my patrons received it, their packages already or will receive them later today or tomorrow. So I hope you guys enjoy those and I hope you enjoy today's episode and I am going to try to shut up and let you guys, <laughs> let you guys have the rest of your day. So I'm going to, I'm going to say goodbye now because I'm a, I'm in a really crazy mood. Um, Thanks for spending some time with me, and if you if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye, guys!